Welcome back to Just a Breathe the Chat. This is the fourth episode of season two. Um, I do have a cha I do have a YouTube channel called Breezyville. You can go and check out. I also have a merch shop for all your Breezyville gear, basically. Um, I've got to share this before I really dive into today's episode. Like, I've had a stressful week. If I'm really being honest, like I just had a bad past couple of weeks in general. Um. Almost getting kicked out. Um, long story behind that one. I'm um, really making my life an open book here. But I also just was working on editing and stuff for my True Crime Lounge podcast, and I happened to just go see the sunset, and I had to go like, I think I'm gonna go walk and enjoy the sunset for a while. Cause I all when I see a sunset, I'm literally like, Have you heard the song "The Painter" by Cody Johnson? Well, um, is a line that goes, she has every sunset she has ever seen memorized. And I do. I really do. I love sunsets. I like, they remind me that not everything is black and white. Sometimes we need a little, we need color in our life. And I often forget that as much as a closed book as I am, I see sunsets and it just calms me down and soothes me. I don't know what it is about them. But, yeah. But, like, I had to get out and just walk around my complex zone because it just felt so nice and everything. But, let's go ahead and jump into, like, today's episode, shall we? Um, I want to talk about my middle school years, <laughs> um, primarily. Um, middle school was not the easiest for me. I got bullied for the way I smell, for the way I talk. My home life wasn't the easiest. Um, my sister kept exposing everything that was going on, which didn't really get any sympathies at all. And when you're in middle school, I think it's like bully, you, like, it's the awkward years, the bullied years, primarily. Didn't get to high school, you just don't care. Which, I talked a little bit about that in my Southern Sassy Bell. Sassy Southern Bell podcast with my OG bestie on there, which I talked about her some, but yeah. But middle school is just like, ugh, sixth grade was awful. Like, I had an embarrassing, a few embarrassing moments there. Um, from seventh to eighth grade, it was awful. Um, but I was just really happy to leave middle school when it was all over with. Um, I was an emotional wreck. Um, but I was also in a house where I didn't cry about my problems. I was taught, I was had narcissist as a, my, I had narcissist as parents. Um, and I grew up in that environment where basically if you talked about anything you were going through, it made you weak. You just had to suck it up and deal with it. Um, if I complained to my stepdad, it would be like, sorry, figure it out yourself. Which really did strike an independent side of me, which I I was like that to begin with. But if I cried, I was weak and everything else. So it was just like, suck it up, buttercup. It was really unhealthy because it later affected me in my early, in my adult years. Because I didn't learn how to cope. I started like, on top of that, I was already losing a fifth grade fr a friend I met in the fifth grade. Which, that friendship wasn't meant to last. Looking back now, I'm like, yes. That friendship had to be lost. Completely. And some friendships are just like that in general. But. I also was starting to de de develop anxiety. Like. I had this high hopes at the time. At this time. Where it's like. So here's the thing. Like. I was that kid that like. When you made a promise to me. I expected you to keep it. When you got upset. But, like, I also started developing anxiety and getting overwhelmed all the time, and I didn't know how to deal with it. I didn't have anyone I could talk to about it. Like, you just didn't talk about mental health as you do now. Um, it's not as open, and it really takes a toll on you in your adult years. A lot of people don't even realize. A lot of times, like, the, uh, the generation that raised me didn't even realize it. And now, I'm like, therapy works. <laughs> it really does. But, yeah, anxiety was, like, one of those things I really started to struggle with, and I didn't really understand it at the time. 
No one didn't try to explain to me, oh, you're just battling anxiety, deal with it. Keep in mind, my sister was already going through her share of stuff, so I like I saw firsthand like what going to a mental health um <clears throat> cl- clinic could talk about this. Like if people found out, they looked at you like you were crazy. So we didn't talk about it. And I know a lot of people still don't believe in therapy, but I fully do believe in therapy. Um, it took me a while to get to this point, but yeah. But also, my home life was not not easy at all. Like I got made fun of for the way I smelled, no matter how try how much I tried to shower. It got to a point where like we had to make my PE like either last close to the last period of the day because of how I smelled, and I didn't like that at all. Um, there was a few teachers from middle school that I loved, um, but school was always my safety net. That was the thing, and even though I was being bullied, I didn't really let it bother me because. One, my home life was just as terrible. <clears throat> um, I was basically learning, ha- having to cook at from the cooking clean from a young age, which I, I'm not complaining about it by no means, but it was one of those, like, I didn't grow up sheltered. I didn't. I grew up in a house way below the poverty line where you had to work, and if you didn't work, um, or you didn't do what somebody wanted, you would get yelled at and stuff like that, like, Sounds crazy, but a lot of people, I don't think a lot of people really understand just, like, how bad my home life was. Um, and it probably will anger some people today just saying it now, but, like, I got to a point where, like, I'm at a point now where I'm okay talking about it, but it was, like, especially in middle school, like, I didn't talk about it. I tr- I pretended that people weren't talking about me about the way I smelled, about the way I talk. <laughs> spoke and everything like of all the embarrassing moments like there's some that i'm never gonna live down but i try not to think about them but also really think at the end of the day that sometimes those awkward years have to happen like you go through a lot in middle school there were several there was a couple of times um and very embarrassing moments that we will not talk about but I tried to fit in, like, with a crowd that I didn't belong in, and I realized that now, but at the time, I was just like, I wanted to fit in, I wanted to be normal, I didn't want to have to pretend like, I didn't want to pretend, I didn't want to think about what was going on in my home life. I was already having to be the adult at home, I just wanted to be a kid, and I could not be a kid. Sounds sad to say, but also, it's like, even my home life, I started, like, Finding ways to cope with everything going on, I began to cut myself. Not something I'm proud of, but it was easier to manage that. I thought, if I could manage doing that, like, I could manage my home life, and I did. I don't cut myself now, but I haven't done that in years. But, like, it wasn't a healthy way to cope. I didn't know that. A lot of people didn't really understand it, like... There was a lot of, like, things that I wish I would have been taught growing up. I wish I would have had a normal childhood. But sometimes life doesn't give you the life you want. It gives you the life that you need to become a better person. Like, I would be praying every night for something to change, and nothing would change. Which will lead to a lot of, which will lead to like a major effect to me as I will talk about later on. But yeah, but that's it for today's episode. I will see y'all next time. Y'all have a great day. Remember, mental health is important, guys. Please take the time to focus on yourself. Know that you'll tell your story when you're ready to tell tell your story.